morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Welcome back to Fox 23 News. I'm Nicole Menner. Over in Omaha, the Bulldogs were just one win away from the College World Series Finals. What would be their first in five years? Now, going back all the way to early June when they won that first regional, the Diamond Dogs have seemed unstoppable since then. But the Beavers of Oregon State finally being the ones to slow them down today. Hunter Stovall would play to run in the first inning for an early lead, but things taking a very quick turn. Tied at one in what would end up being a long second inning, Jacob Billingsley's day would come to an end after three runs and loading up the bases. Reliever Keegan James not having any such luck with the Beavers either. It would be 6-1 when the inning finally came to an end. And I know college baseball crazy comebacks have been happening all week long in Omaha, but not tonight. The Beavers were not slowing down. A triple here in the seventh inning would make that nine runs as Oregon State went on to win it 12-2. So the teams will now play tomorrow with the winner heading to the College World Series Finals. Obviously, we didn't do enough to uh, earn a victory today. Um, I think you got to start with the fact that uh, we didn't get a leadoff guy off, out until the sixth. We only got two out all day. We gave him 11 freebies. Uh, Oregon State did a great job of keeping the pressure on, uh, a very good job of hitting mistakes. Um, and that's really kind of uh, capsulized the, the, the ball game right there. We, we did a, uh, a poor job of getting leadoff guys on, and we put too many freebies on for them, and then they took advantage of that. PGA action continued today with round two of the Travelers Championship in Connecticut. Zach Johnson took the lead after round one, followed by Jordan Spieth and Rory McIlroy. Here was Spieth from the sixth fairway from 276 yards out. It would hit the green, stop just inches away from the cup. He would go on to make the eagle there, but he would struggle after that, shooting a 73 in round two. Rory McIlroy with the birdie putt here on the 15th to go one under. He would end up finishing with a 69, tied for eighth. U.S. Open champ Brooks Kepka with back-to-back -back birdies, but he would end the day pretty low on the board at 34th. And ending the day, Zach Johnson would fall out of first. He's tied for second, while Brian Harmon is now on top. The NBA draft tipped off last night, and the New Orleans Pelicans used their only pick to bolster their backcourt, selecting Penn State point guard Tony Carr in the second round. So here's your scouting report. Going 51st overall, Carr averaged nearly 20 points, 5 assists, and 5 rebounds as a sophomore at Penn State last season. He scored at least 20 points in 17 games and led his team to an NIT title for the second time in school history. He also made a lot of improvements from his freshman season, averaging 13 points that first season, so a seven-point difference, and bumping up his three-point percentage from 32 as a freshman to 43 as a sophomore. And the 20-year-old size is what GM Dell Demps seems to like the most. We're pretty excited about it. Um, young guard, played in the Big Ten, you know, Average, I think, 19 and a half points a game. Um, we like his ability to score. We're going to bring him in hopefully next week, have him in summer league. He is a 51st pick. We didn't think he was going to drop this far, so we feel lucky to have the opportunity to draft him. You know, he's been a guy that's been on the radar for us um, for a while. Um, Bryson Graham, our director of scouting, has really been talking about him even all the way back from the Nike camp last year. You know, we like his size. We like his uh, ability to make plays, his IQ. Um, that he's 6'5", and um, say we're, 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 we're lucky to see, we're, we're, we'll see him in summer league, and, you know, we're, we're really looking forward to that. And free agency also opens up soon, so we'll see what happens to Rondo and to Marcus Cousins. It's always something to look yeah. at. I believe it's July 1st. A marks. Yeah, I believe it's Coming July 1st. And Mississippi State. Okay. Across for I them know. tomorrow. We've got to go to so take down Oregon. Gotta they've do been, this. I mean, they've been on such a roll lately, and then all of a sudden today it was just not their game, it's tough, clearly. But at least they did, they were, in, I guess, in the winner's bracket, yes. so they do get this other yes, chance. Yes, yes. Four teams double. left, right? Oregon, Mississippi State, Arkansas, Florida. Florida. Yep, three okay. of them in the SEC. That's what I was coming to. SEC. Yep. We've got Mark's school, Mark's team versus <laughs> my team with Arkansas and Florida. And we know I think what Arkansas, those hogs are going to do. Well, I mean, they have a better chance because they only have to win once. I and mean, the Gators this have to whole win twice. College World Series, though, it has been comeback wins. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen. That's why today, watching Mississippi, you never knew if they were going to come back. But 12 2. I know. I know. And we're dogs. really pulling for Mississippi in yeah, this, yes. Yeah. And the SEC in general. And, as and, long as and, it's not, what is it, Oregon State? Yeah. I'll be happy as long as it's not Oregon and State. And kudos to their coach. The, what, the job he's been able to do this yeah, year. Yeah, absolutely really. amazing to see. I mean, they started off the season 
No one thought they were going to make it this far. And look there at them go. now. All right, we'll be back right after this. <laughs>